Okay, this is the very first episode of this podcast. I've never done one before, so bear with me. What I'm going to be talking about today is a little bit of a background on myself, and then we'll get going. So just to keep it super simple, super uh, to the point, uh, my name is William Garrido. I am the admin for Doctoring is My Passion, the Instagram page, the YouTube page or YouTube channel that is and the Facebook page. I have a couple of other admins on there. They're not active um, But they're you know a couple of other people, but I am the main contributor to the Facebook page So a little bit on myself uh, besides being the admin to all of this all of these social media uh, channels and platforms I also am a dog trainer obviously dog training is my passion is the brand I um, I've been training dogs since 2009 and my experience has ranged from working with protection dogs with police dogs I've done some work overseas as a contractor uh, working with the explosive detection dogs with the contract working dogs so the civilian side of the of the uh, of the work over there with the dogs and I've done some pet training as well as working with service dogs currently at this moment as of the recording of this episode I am also an instructor at a dog training school I'm not gonna say the name of the school I'm sure you can figure it out if you do enough digging into my um, into my channel uh, or my Instagram or my Facebook um, but um, I'm not going to say the name of that company not because um, not because I don't like them I'm very grateful to that company they they have done a lot for me it has been a, a great experience for me and it is one of the doctoring schools I went to as a student it's just to keep things separate you know um, when I talk about dog training it is me talking about dog training. I have a curriculum that I follow for the dog training school and we want to keep those separate. So if I say something really stupid, for example, not that I'm ever going to, but if I were to say something incredibly stupid that has no bearing in dog training, we would not want that to appear as though the company that hires me said that so when I talk as myself I'm talking as myself not as a representative for the company that I work for so anyway so that's a little bit about me I also run a protection a protection club uh, the sport is specifically specifically the sport that I do is uh, PSA I've done a little bit of French ring a little bit of Mondial ring um, but mainly PSA uh, I have had uh, some club members have done other things, but you know I help them out here and there. But my main sport is PSA. I am a certified PSA trial decoy, so I go to trials every every year to maintain my qualifications, and I am the main decoy or helper for my club. So that's a little bit about me, uh, a little bit of an intro. And now what this podcast is going to be about, it's going to be about different things that I see and hear about dog training in general. There's just so many things uh, that through my experience I have learned. I've learned a lot of things the hard way. I've learned a lot of things by learning through other people's mistakes. And my goal is to get as many people on the right track as I can. This is why one of the reasons I'm an instructor at a dog training school because I love to set people on the right track and that's just one of my uh, missions I feel in life is to do that in the best way that I can not in an arrogant way to tell people that I'm the best because I certainly I'm on my journey to being as good as I can be but not in an arrogant way where you know my way is the right way or anything of that nature. I just want people to know that there are some fundamental things about dog training, animal training, and psychology in general that are never going to change. Some 
very basic fundamental thing fundamental things that will never change are the same for people as they are for animals and there are some things that are very different from species to species um, and I think what happens is the dog training field is littered with um, profits and and just people who uh, want to make dog training into a religion um, you know and it's just it's just sad to get away from the fundamental concept of animal training and to go into religion so those are things that I don't like um, and social media of course does not help social media is great for a lot of things clearly one of the great things is you get to network uh, and you get to listen and learn from other people and it's much easier to connect with other people but it's also it's also a vehicle for um, for uh, just clowns and uh, and you know and people who uh, who really don't know and sometimes they don't know because they haven't done the research there you know they haven't done the work and they just you know they think they know it or they just truly you know they, they truly are ignorant because of where they are in their particular journey and so when those people get on social media and and build a, a big presence or have a message that resonates with somebody and even though it's not right uh, then this becomes a trend and those are things that that you know a lot of a lot of us it's not just me a lot of us look at those things and we're like oh, no it's really not that complex or you know it's really not that simple it's a little more complex than that but anyway so that's all that is um, the reason for this podcast is to do that another reason too is to you know share my thoughts share my experience uh, I do like to teach. Uh, I like to talk about dog training because dog training in general is very parallel to just human psychology. There are, there are some things that are just mirror image. And if you look at the experiments, you know, back in the 30s and 40s in laboratories, these experiments were done on animals for the benefit of people and to this day this still happens so there are some things that are are definitely going to go hand in hand and learning about psychology learning about uh, human psychology uh, learning about training and that just really it's something that I'm I'm uh, passionate about I, I have books on you know, I'm constantly reading and listening on the topic of not just dog training, but psychology in general. Um, Self-help books, I'm, I'm huge into that. Um, you know, I'm very big into learning why we do things, why, you know, we make the same mistakes, uh, how we overcome certain things. And a lot of that obviously comes right back to dog training. It's very, very similar. You know, I've, I've had this fascination for, for that topic, not dog training or animal training specifically, but I've had a fascination for human development and I suppose psychology and, uh, and self-help for a very long time. You know, when I was a kid, I didn't really think, oh, I want to be a dog trainer or an animal trainer, or nothing like that. But the thought of getting better at something always fascinated me. When I was very young, I used to do martial arts. I did uh, Taekwondo, WTF Taekwondo. WTF meaning World Taekwondo Federation, uh, not the bad word. <laughs> so I did Taekwondo when I was a kid. I really got into it. I was obsessed with it. I thought about it every single moment. I did it every day. I I was fortunate to have a very 
strict, um, very strict, very traditional school that I attended and, and had very traditional instructor. Everything was done in Korean. The numbers, the counting, everything was done in Korean and everything was very strict. This is when I was a kid. You know, so this was definitely a long time ago. And I, I was fascinated by it. I just wanted to get better and I wanted to get better. And I, and I thought about it. I practiced it every day. I practiced it when I didn't even need to practice it. I did it and I got really good in a very short period of time. And, um, you know, a relatively short period of time. And what happened at some point is I got an injury, a really bad injury. I tore uh, some muscles and they put me out of commission for a while. So not only did I get injured pretty bad, but I also re-injured it twice. Once I re-injured it because I... Thought I was feeling better, but I, I knew I wasn't fully, fully, fully better. So I wasn't fully recovered. So I just, I was so depressed because I couldn't do Taekwondo anymore. So I just went back into it a little bit too quick. And I started training and fell right back into it. And then boom, I just re injured it. I, you know, and that was not a good thing. So I, it set me back again. And this time I'm again limping. I can barely walk. Um, doing any sort of sports completely out of the question. The second time I re-injured it, so I, I re-injured it uh, another time after that, and that was when the you know the school bullies realized something was off with me, and I couldn't defend myself. And so you know there was these two guys that kind of had beef with me. But prior to that, didn't really bother, but this time they knew I was limping. And they just ganged up on me and, and I could barely walk. They knew I was limping, so they grabbed my leg and they started just, um, you know, moving it and just pure, just pure violence pretty much. I mean, they didn't kick me, stomp on me or punch me or make me bleed. They didn't do anything like that, but they grabbed my leg knowing it was injured and they, you know, they really re-injured it, made it really, really bad. And now, again, I can barely walk. And so I was very depressed because I couldn't do martial arts anymore. It's something I was very, very passionate. That was the one thing that at, at a young age I saw myself doing for the rest of my life. So this happened, and now I'm depressed because I can't do this. All I can do is think about it, and I can't do it, so that's very depressing. So what I did is I got into drawing because I wanted to do something. I need, needed to occupy myself with something, so I started drawing. Of course, when I started drawing, it looked bad. I couldn't draw for crap, and that upset me. So instead of giving up and saying, I, I just can't draw like a lot of people do, I just thought to myself, no, I'm going to keep drawing until I get better. And I the same dedication that I had for martial arts, I applied that to drawing. Not because I enjoyed it, but because I just wanted to get better. So I drew for hours every single day. You know, if, if I couldn't draw fa a face, I would draw faces every single hour. And I would do this for like three to five hours nonstop minimum every day. And I slowly started to see the progress because I knew through doing martial arts, this was the recipe to getting better at things was by doing it again and again and again. So I started doing that for months and I got better and better and better. Then, you know, this happened to me when I was, you know, this, all of this is taking place when I was in Peru. I was born in Peru and I spent my childhood in Peru. But then at 12, 12 and a half or so, maybe 13, I moved to the U.S. So my father, who had been living in the U.S. for a very long time, he wasn't really in my life when I was a kid. But, uh, you know, right when I was 12, 13, uh, he wanted to kind of, you know, spend more time with me. So he brought me, he did all the process, all the paperwork, brought me to the U.S. And um, so at this point, I'm getting better. My leg's getting better and my drawing is getting really, really, you know, really on point I still had a lot of work 
I had a lot of improvement that I needed to make in, in art and in drawing, but I kept at it. So I came to the States. Uh, my father passed away weeks after he brought me to the States. So that's a, you know, it's a completely different story. I'm not going to bore you with that, but I ended up living with my grandparents and, you know, I got here, went to high school. This is in Connecticut. So I'm in Connecticut, you know, uh, freshman year, right out of, uh, you know, right from Peru, start freshman year. I know very little English, just whatever I had learned in school in Peru. And uh, now, you know, completely different uh, environment, culture shock. And I'm not going to bore you my whole life story. But anyway, so what happened was I, I kept drawing and I did it every single day all throughout high school. And by the end of high school, I got really, really good at it. Like I was featuring newspapers. I uh, won a couple of national competitions in scholastics art. And I got an offer for um, for a pretty, a very um, generous uh, scholarship to to a couple of colleges, and uh, and I and I took one of those, so I did, but then I realized that I really wasn't into it, and you know, kind of fast forward a couple of things that happened. I'm gonna really fast forward up to this point. So I dropped out of college. My heart really wasn't into it because I loved drawing and painting. I was, I mean, I was good, really, really good, not to brag, and I still am. I still occasionally draw, um, but um, just college is just not something I was into. So I dropped out after one semester, and and then I joined the Coast Guard. I was there for six years. And in that time, now I'm not drawing anymore. Uh, you know, I'm at this point, very, very close to me joining. I uh, I met my wife, and this was, I mean, I met my wife like 17 years ago. We've been together for, we've been married for 16 years already. So I uh, met my wife, and, you know, we started a family. And you know now I wasn't really drawing. I was now in the Coast Guard, so this is you know manual labor. But the the uh, quest to get better at something was always there, and so I started researching, um, you know, the topic of human development, and and I started researching the topic of uh, self help. And I started reading and getting programs on that. And I always had this desire to get better at something. It just, it always had to be something. And I would, I would get obsessed with it. And that's kind of how it started. You know, I, I wanted to get better at something. I, if, I, if I put my target on it, I wanted, I needed to get better at it. I needed to get good at it. To the point of obsession. Well, Towards the end of my enlistment, after six years, or right about six years, this is when I realized, you know, I don't, I don't really want to be in the Coast Guard for like 20 years. So I started looking at different career options, and dog training was one of them. So I'm looking at dog training as a possibility, and I'm thinking, okay, well, how, how do I, uh, how do I transition into that? So I, I did, and, you know, I took, I took a risk. I, um, you know, I left with terminal leave. I went to this dog training school, uh, US Canine. And when I went to US Canine, I mean, they didn't take the GI Bill at the moment. Now they do. But when I went to US Canine at that moment, 2009, they didn't take the GI Bill. So I had to take out a loan. I paid for it myself. And I went to it. And man, when I got there, you know, I, I had no prior experience handling dogs, working with dogs, nothing. Green, green, right? So I go there and I find myself back in that I'm not good at this. And I had interest in it. You know, I was thinking this looks like it's really cool. So I definitely want to do that. 
Um, and I realized when I went to that doctoring school, obviously through no fault of my own, I was new, so I was not good at it. Leash handling was awful. Timing was awful. Just the whole concept of training an animal was completely new to me. So I had to be back at that step one and now go through that obsession process all over again to get better at it. And I and I, and I did a bunch of things to get better, you know, from reading books, going to seminars, really pushing myself out of my comfort zone, working with dogs that I didn't even feel comfortable with, not dogs in general, but certain dogs. And if you're a dog trainer, if you work with dogs, you know exactly what I'm talking about. There are certain dogs that are just not fun to work with that definitely give you the you know the the hairs in the back of your neck standing and so you know I did all of those things I, I worked for this other company and I went to this contract there was so much that went on in this journey of mine to being where I am today that required a lot of pushing outside of my comfort zone and obsessing over just getting you know thinking about it constantly that uh, got me pretty good got me pretty decent and not to brag or anything but I am fairly decent at what I do I'm not saying I'm amazing because you know in my mind I am but for the sake of modesty I'm not gonna say I am the best there is because I know that that that's certainly not the case I know that there are people that are way you know way ahead in a different part of their own journey that that makes them or puts them in a place where I look up to them because they have more experience than I do but I am very good at what I do and my leash handling my timing the way I explain I explain things the way I teach things to animals um, my feel for the for the art of dog training and and the way I explain it to people I'm I'm pretty good at it so this is where I am today and I'm still fascinated by that concept of how do you get better at something and I see it when I work with dogs you know when I'm working with a dog seeing that journey of them getting better at something is equally fascinating to me where I'm like you didn't know how to do this and now through repetition and repetition and repetition just like I did, you are also getting better. And I look at that and I look at it as, you know, the the owner or the trainer that I'm helping and same concept, you know, you are not good at this. How do you get better? Here is how you can get better is by doing this and approaching it this manner and moving your body a certain way and doing it this way and putting in the repetitions and the sessions and that is how you get better. And then watching the owners or the trainers that are in training get better at it. You know, the, the person who's never trained a dog, you know, in a in a matter of a few months, get them to a point where they actually look really good and, and they can confidently train a dog. Um, it's also fascinating to me. So the the whole concept of learning a skill and getting good at something, something that I... I've always found very fascinating and that's what this podcast is about is every topic that I'm going to bring up and I'm going to I'm going to definitely aim to make this a regular thing not just a, a hit it and quit it but my aim is to provide con content I mean I've had the dog training is my passion Facebook page for a, for years now and uh, and it started as, well, we'll see what happens. And I've been consistent with it. I've been posting something like every day. Same thing with my YouTube channel. I post something every week. Uh, for a period of time, I was posting a video every single day on my YouTube channel. So I'm, I'm very consistent with things that I put my mind to. And the podcast, I'm going to aim for it to be the same way. Obviously, you know, you all know life sometimes gets busy. I am a very busy person. 
I have a full-time job. I work my own dogs. I have a family. I have two kids. I have my wife. I have, again, my own dog. I have a, I have a club that I run. And uh, I have uh, club members that I help out on the side. And so, you know, and I have, um, I have two books out and I'm currently working on a third book. So I do have a very, very busy uh, lifestyle and I'm not complaining. This is something that I've chosen and that I'm, I'm very in love with, but you know, life sometimes does get unexpectedly busy, but yes, the point being the podcast is something that I'm going to try to make, um, that I'm going to make very, a very regular thing.